The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 11. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 17th, 1973, in London, England. The Blessed Lord said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. So, what is that thing which is living and dead? <coughs> the body. The body is living and dead. Uh, so, Krishna uh, indirectly or directly chastised or drawn that uh, the behavior that you are showing, it is not like a learned man. Nāna Sūtan Dipandita. That means, indirectly he said that you do not know things as they are. Not learned. You are fool. Uh, in spite of Arjun speaking so many things in support of his being non-violent and not to kill his kinsmen, Krishna chastised him that you are not learning, you are fool. So this is the position. Those who are under the bodily concept of life, they can speak so many learned things, but after all they are full. Jasyāta buddhi kunapi tidhāsuke sadhik kalatra desu bhavma ijyati na jati sa buddhi salile na karhi chet janesu avigneshu saeva gokhara. In the Srimad Bhāgavatam, those who are under the bodily concept of life, they are described as follows. Jasya atma buddhi, atma means self. Atma buddhi in this body, what is this body? Kunapi tridhātake. It is a bag of three elements, kapha pitta bhāl, mucus, bhāl, and air. So, or ordinarily you can understand this is a combination, this material body is combination of flesh, bone, blood, mucus, stool, urine, and so many other things. But that we are not self. But foolish person, they are taking this lump of matter bones and flesh, accepting that I am this body. <coughs> no learned man will take like that. The whole world is misled under this conception. They are accepting this lump of matter, blood and flesh and bones, uh, and this is uh, this is animal mentality, animal things like that. No learned man. Learned man, one who knows, he will say, Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit soul. Uh, I am servant of God. This is learned spirit. Uh, I am not this body. So Krishna is chastising Arjun because he has accepted uh, his uh, becoming his disciple. So the spiritual master has the right to chastise the disciple for right direction, uh, like the teacher, like the father. Uh, similarly, uh, although Krishna and Arjun are friends, 
But Arjuna is accepting my spiritual master. Uh, there should not be any uh, compromising what as it is done between friend and friend. The right thing must be said. Uh, that you are wrong. Uh, don't talk nonsense. Talking like a very learned man. But you do not know anything. Uh, why I do not know? Then because this body, while living, avatāsum, avatāsum means the living force, while the living force is there, uh, and while the living force is gone, two conditions, this body is moving very nicely because the living force is there. And as, as soon as the living force is gone out, this nice body will no longer move, it will decompose. Dasta or dasta obvious. Again become, it is called pancha bhūt, mixed with the earth. Earth, water, fire, air, sky, these five gross elements are the ingredients of this body. So as soon as this soul is out of this body, this body again conservation of the energy. The earthly energy goes to the earth, the waterly energy goes to the water. Uh, it is a combination of earth, water, air, fire. So they become decomposed uh, and become distributed to different elements. And that is the scientific law. It is called conservation of energy. The energy is never lost. Uh, it comes back again to the original stock. Uh. So Krishna says this body, either uh, in living force or without living force. Without living force it is called dead. With living force it is called living. Uh, living. In both the conditions, uh, a learned man, learned man means one who knows Brahma Bhuta, one who knows Brahma, one who has realized Brahma, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma. Uh, as soon as one is on the stage of Brahma Bhuta uh, stage, he can understand that I am not this body. I am separate from this body. This knowledge was very common knowledge. Uh, at least we can see five thousand years ago uh, that the Kshatriyas were fighting severely uh, one another, but still they are not in bodily concept of life. <coughs> so Arjuna, being Kshatriya, is so much embarrassed with the bodily concept of life <coughs> Therefore, uh, Krishna chastised him that you are not a very learned man. You are talking just like a learned man, but you are not learned. So this conclusion is to be taken by us, that anyone within this world, if he has got bodily concept of life, he is not a learned man. He is a fool. So this world, at the present moment at least, it is a fool's paradise. Nobody is learning, because everyone is working under the bodily concept of life. This is chastise. This is the first chastise man. The tribe, before giving lesson, <coughs> if the student is writing or reading wrongly, then the teacher immediately says, you Fool, it is not like this. It should be like this. Uh, so the first day uh, Krishna took in educating Arjuna. The Bhagavad Gita is now being actually spoken. Bhagavan was. Uh, the first basic principle uh, is explained to Arjuna that you do not know anything. 
Don't talk just like a lot of man. <coughs> but actually that is our own. You know, every one of us, of us, in the same position. Just like yesterday, two uh, boys came. No philosophy, talking like nonsense, starvation. As if he has taken, uh, what is called, contract for stopping starvation. Uh, he is starving, everyone is starving, this law of uh, the nature will go on because uh, there are three qualities of the nature satagun, rajagun, tamagun. So the natural laws will go on under the three laws. Therefore, Always we shall find uh, three classes or three status of living condition. That will be explained in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, everywhere there are different species of life. Uh, everywhere these three qualities are working. Uh, just like there are some good trees. Good trees means which are producing nice fruits and flowers. They are good trees. Uh, and there are trees, uh, no fruit, no flower, they are very long standing, uh, no use, no useful purpose. Uh, I have seen in Los Angeles big, big uh, palm trees, very long, but there is no fruit. Uh, in India, there are palm trees like that. They bear fruit, very nice fruit, tall, big fruit, very sweet fruit. <coughs> so any tree which does not give us nice fruit or nice flower, that is sinful. Amongst the trees also, there are pious trees, there are sinful trees. Amongst the animals also, there are pious animals, sinful animals. Uh, uh, just like dog and the cow. Cow is pious animal and the dog is sinful animal. So nature's, uh, among the birds, the crow is sinful bird and the ducks, the white swan, they are pious bird. The peacocks. Uh, the, uh, Similarly, in the human society also, there are pious men and uh, sinful men. Those who are pious, they have got different position. Janmaisadyasuta Sri. Pious man means uh, born in very good family, uh, rich family. Janma Aishadya. Aishadya means riches, opulence. Janma, first class, aristocratic family, Brahman family. Janma, he said, Sutta, educated, highly educated. Sri, beautiful. These are the signs of pious life. And similarly, just the opposite. Ugly, uh, no education, um, born in poor family, a low grade family, poor. These are the things. Uh, so, uh, either you take human life or animal life or bird's life, beast life, tree's life, anywhere you go, these three laws are working. Goodness, passion and ignorance. Therefore, always there must be three classes, uh, middle class, high class and lower class. There must be. So you cannot make one classless. That is not possible. So long the bodily concept of life is there, there must be these three classes. Uh, high class, middle class, and lower class. So uh, those who are condemned, uh, they must suffer. Everyone is condemned in this material world. At first class condemned, second class condemned, third class condemned. 
So you will find this first class, second class, third. you cannot stop it. Just huh? back in Bombay sometimes I sold to my disciples. Uh, say in 1900, uh, 35. 1935 means our 50 years ago. 50 years ago, when I was in Bombay, uh, that time I was doing some business. So a class of men, they were living on footpath. Uh, their home is on the footpath. They have got a box or a bag and lying on the footpath and eating on the footpath. There, everything on the footpath. Uh, now, uh, the same class of men are still there. Now, economically, a fifty years ago, the value of money uh, was greater. At that time, fifty years ago, uh, we are, we are purchasing, say, ghee, eh, at most one rupee per kilo. Uh-huh. So now you cannot get first class ghee unless you pay twenty-five rupees per kilo. So the value of uh, money has decreased. Uh, so uh, that means, in other words, people are getting more money. Uh, formerly one servant was engaged, uh, 10 rupees or uh, 12 rupees per month. Uh, now you cannot get a servant unless you pay 100 rupees. So in that comparison, the, everyone is getting more money, but still the condition is the same. Uh, condition is the same. This is gone. If you get more money, the other circumstances will force you to remain in the same condition as you were fifty years ago. Uh, because you are destined. Uh, this is called destiny. You cannot change your destiny. Uh, that is not possible. Uh, that what Bhagavad says that do not try to change your destiny. Uh, everyone is trying to change the destiny. I am poor man. Uh, I must be very rich man. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, you cannot change your destiny. Tasaiva hita prajati hita kovida nalabhati jad bhramatam uparajatha. In this world, we are, every one of us, are bound up by the laws of karma, destiny. Uh, we have got our destiny, so much happiness, so much distress we must have, because this is a mixture of happiness and distress. Here you cannot have unadulterated happiness. That is not possible in this way. Unadulterated happiness, real happiness, can be achieved in the spiritual world, not in the material world. Uh, to certain amount of Happiness and certain amount of distress you have to enjoy and suffer. You cannot change it. This is the law of nature in this material. Therefore, Bhagavad says that tasyaiva heta prajati ta kovida nalabhati jad bhramatam uparajata. People are wandering within this material world, living entity in different forms of life, under different conditions of life, uh, uh, but they are not getting the information of Krishna. Uh, that is a misfortune. So one who is fortunate uh, during this uh, period or continuous wandering in different species of life and different planets, he contacts uh, another devotee, Guru Krishna, uh, or one who is actually anxious to uh, unite with the Supreme Lord, how one gets this consciousness by associating with devotees. Uh, just like we are holding this class, 
Even those who are not devotees, outsiders, if they come, they can also understand. Then he becomes, one becomes very seriously anxious how to understand God, how to go back to home, back to God. Okay? Then Krishna immediately helps. This is the process. Uh, Krishna is there within your heart. As soon as you become a little serious, uh, immediately Krishna is ready. Krishna is ready. He is sitting with you as a friend, simply uh, looking for the opportunity when he will come back to me. That is Krishna. He is always uh, sitting with you. But uh, we are not uh, willing to go back to home, back to God. We want to become God in this material. This is our position. Instead of going back to home, back to God, and live with God, we want to become God here. <coughs> that is our position. Therefore we are suffering. Here is a, nowhere you cannot be God. God is one. Nobody can be equal or above Him. Everyone must be subordinate to God. Therefore, those who are not learned, foolish people, they are trying to be happy in this material world by adjustment and becoming himself God. This is atheism and this is demoniac tendency. But those who are uh, advanced in knowledge, they know that we are eternally servant of God. We cannot become God. Uh, better to remain servant of God. And that is our happiness. So those who are in the bodily concept of life, they cannot uh, advance in this real knowledge that we are eternally servant of God. Uh, our constitutional position is like that. If we do not serve God, we do not agree we are servant of God, but if we deny, uh, no, I am not servant. So that means I become servant of Maya. Servant I will have to remain. That is my constitutional position. Uh, so uh, one must first of all understand what is his identity. So this is the beginning of a lesson given by Krishna that you are lamenting for this body. This is not your identity. Uh, this is not your identity. You are wrongly thinking. Uh, just like if your coat uh, is somehow or other destroyed, that does not mean that you are destroyed. Uh, if your car by accident is broken, that uh, that does not mean that you are finished. Uh, sometimes we get accident. Uh, that is another thing. But I am not the car. I am not this body. I am not this coat. This is real now. Although sometimes we become little sorry, but the identity is different. So Krishna says that you are talking like learned man, but you do not know your identity. You are not this body. This is the summary information. Asachyananasutastam anasutastam pragyavadan So. Anyone who is not in perfect knowledge, he should not take the position of talking like a learned man. That is cheating and that is foolishness. First of all, you know things as they are, then talk. Otherwise, it is said that it is better not to talk than to talk foolish. It is better to stop talking. Therefore, sometimes uh, in spiritual advancement, uh, there is a process, mono. Mono means not to talk. Those who are too much foolish, the spiritual master orders him, don't talk. Please remain silent. That's all. Uh, because if you talk, you talk simply nonsense. Uh, why should you spoil your energy by such nonsense talking? Better stop. Uh, the meditation is also like that also. In uh, Israel of talking and doing nonsense, if one is remain, remaining silent for some time, 
it is little good for him. But this meditation and mauna, silence, is not meant for the devotees. Uh, they are meant for the lesser intelligent class of man. Uh, devotees' business is always to talk about Krishna. Why they should stop talking? Mauna? No. Kītaniya uh, sadāhari, Chaitanya Mahāprabhu says, that one has to chant and talk of Krishna twenty-four hours. So where is the question of oh no, silence? There is no question of silence. Uh, silence is for those who are nonsense. Uh, be silent. Don't talk. Uh, for them, at least they practice silence means at least they stop talking nonsense. Uh, but those who are actually advanced, for them there is no such restriction. Bhatansi uh, Bhikuntu Gunanu Varna. We should use our uh, talking power uh, for describing the glories of the Lord. Vaikuntu Gunanu Varna. That is Kirtan. Uh, that is chanting. Avavad Bhayasaki Kirtane. Just like for seven days when Paichit Maharaj was going to die. He had only seven days left. So twenty-four hours, uh, without any eating or without any drinking a drop of water, he went on hearing from Sukhdev Goswami. And similarly, Sukhdev Goswami also went on speaking, speaking, Srimad uh, Bhagavatam. Sri Vishnu, uh, Samane Parikhi, uh, they got, both of them got salvation. Uh, back to home, back to God. How? One was hearing and one was sent. Uh, this is the process. Parikhit Maharaj was hearing and Sukhdev Goswami was chanting. And uh, what is the subject matter? Krishna. That's all. So, Krishna's subject matter is so nice. That simply he do not do anything. Simply hear. That's all. Uh, you have got God given ear. Uh, you can hear. Sit down. Sane sthita suti gatang tanuvan vano vi. Suti gatang. Suti means this ear. Uh, Srautapantha. This is called Srautapantha. But getting knowledge by hearing. Satam prasangad mama vija sangvida bhavanti rit karna rasayana katha. Satam prasangad, when there is actually satsanga. Uh, uh, satsanga means this, talking of Krishna, hearing about Krishna. Thank you very much.